please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Hey, welcome everyone. Hopefully another fun video here at Blue Glow Electronics. If you guys have seen my recent summer 2021 update video, you'll notice I mentioned in there that as part of the barn remodel, trying to get everything set up, I wanted a stereo system down in the bottom part, which is kind of workshop or work on cars and whatnot. Um, I wanted a nice stereo setup, and I had picked up this Hafler DH220 um, amplifier and preamp years ago at a ham fest and kind of put them on a shelf. And I was saving them for a rainy day when I got the barn remodeled and I could actually uh, get to using these. And uh, these, these are some really good, really good sounding amplifier here. It's uh, MOSFET outputs. Any rate, I um, hooked it up down there, played it a couple days, and the right channel died on it. So, thought I'd make a video for you guys of uh, restoring this. There's nothing wrong with the preamp. I just brought it up and thought I'd clean the controls on it. But, hey, we might do a recap on it as well. But definitely want to figure out what we've got to do to get this one running and back in the shop again. So, stay tuned. All right, as you can see on the top of this, got a few little scratches here. It probably happened during my my uh, <laughs> term in the barn, but uh, really nice large heat sinks on this unit. Really heavy overall unit and uh, really nice unit. Uh, these were originally, you know, David Hafler design. These DH220s, you could either get them as a uh, as a kit or you could get them pre-assembled. And I don't know which one this one was, but. We're going to go ahead and get the top off and see if we can figure out what's, uh, what's got the right channel dead. Okay, to get the top off, it's not as easy as you might think. There's about, um, there's six of these on each side. They're little uh, quarter inch screws. There's one at the top here, one at the bottom here, one here, one here, and actually two more here and two more here. So I think it's eight on each side. I also took off from right in here the handle nuts. Um, and so those were uh, 7 16 and um, then that lets the uh, front plate come off. This this unit happens to have the rack mount kit, uh, but if you'll notice here, uh, if you don't have the rack mount kit, underneath is uh, still a nice face without the, uh, the rack mount kit uh, going on to it. So anyway, get a few more screws out here, and then what happens is these heat sinks actually drop out, and then you can lift the top off. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to solder this, uh, unsolder this wire here, so that um, so I can fold this all the way down. I want to check all these outputs on this, and uh, like I said, this side, fortunately, we're able to kind of fold it over uh, and get to everything. One thing I have noticed, um, you noticing anything odd here? These two capacitors right here, which are uh, Elna 63 volt, 12,000 microfarads here on this side and this side. These have been both added on in parallel with the 10,000 microfarad. So, uh, you know, parallel capacitors, you end up with 22,000 microfarads right here. And uh, I'm not sure if they did that because the original Sagamos here were getting weak or what, but um, you can tell whoever did it uh, did a good job at what they did. Um, I'll just need to do a little bit of research to make sure we're not killing anything with the 22,000 microfarad there. Okay, I'm going to start here by removing the... I kind of gave everything a good visual look over. Didn't see anything here. You know, transistors popped in half, resistors burn up. I didn't see anything, you know, jumping out at me here on these boards and uh, by the way there's some kits online where you do a complete upgrade of these boards um, some different components and whatnot but I'm gonna try to leave this thing all original I like David Hafler did some amazing stuff back in the day but anyway taking some pictures so I know exactly where things go I want to take these um, it looks like QN 112's I'm gonna pull these two out on this side and test them and then we'll do the same on the other side um, these things may be getting tough to get these days, these larger MOSFET outputs like this, but we'll see. Uh, let's, let's get these tested. So we're just going to take our little Atlas uh, DCA tester here. We're going to hook one lead onto the, uh, to the body itself here. Uh, super easy to do, maybe. <laughs> and then the other two, doesn't really, that's the one good thing I like about these testers. Doesn't matter where you clip them or how you clip them. Clip the three leads on, you click the own test, it analyzes. Enhancement mode in channel MOSFET. And if I scroll, it'll tell me that, you know, which is the drain, the gate, and the source. 
And then it tells me the gate uh, VGS is uh, uh, 0.17, and I'm writing that down here in my little notebook. VGS, and then the next one here, uh, the test current was uh, at 2.5 milliamps. So we'll keep going through these and test um, each one of them and just make sure they're good because if so, if these outputs are good, then the rest of it should, you know, it'll be, it'll be an easier fix because something tells me these may not be that easy to find and they may not be inexpensive these days. Let's test one more here. Sorry for my bubbling around here. All right, here we go. We hit the on test, analyzing in channel MOSFET 0.17. So these are not only nice, uh, they're nicely matched too here. So 0.17 VGS. And I'm just kind of denoting this stuff here in my notebook. And uh, from there, we'll keep moving on. Two more here, and we're going to test the other side as well. But um, Hey, two out of four is good. I'm going to go ahead and put these two back in here and uh, mount them before I take out the next two. That way I don't have four laying around on my bench to get confused with. At any rate, um, you can see here I use this uh, MG Chemical 860. I'm going to put a little more thermal grease, clean off the old, and put new thermal grease on the, these things. These were probably, this sample was probably made in the early 80s, and, uh, and I just want to make sure that... Um, the, the heat sink greases up to, up to par. When you put this on, you want a super thin layer. You don't want big gobs of white. Um, so you want to put just a thin layer on everything. A thin layer on the uh, on the heat sink, on the mica, and just a thin layer here on the transistor itself. And uh, you get the idea. Just super thin. Um, I've seen people before, they put just thick gobs of this stuff all over everything. And uh, while it's designed to do heat transfer, too much of it's not necessarily a good thing. While I'm pulling out the other side, I'm going to check this thermal cutout. Um, should be short. Uh, what happens is when this thing gets to a certain temperature, uh, as in overheating, it basically cuts the power. Um, to the amplifier to feeding these things so it's a uh, it's a thermal cutout okay we've tested all four of the output um, MOSFETs on this and they're good yay at least uh, here's a, here's why that's good for a couple of reasons reason number one um, these may be extremely hard to come by these days I haven't looked them at but older MOSFETs and the this size container are getting uh, scarcer and harder to come by. So don't know that for sure. I'll have to look these up. But all these are good, so I don't have to worry about that. But these could have been a pain to find or very expensive if I, if I did. The second and probably more important reason for me is if these were dead, then I've got to ask myself what killed these output transistors, right? Which leads me to... <laughs> my JBL L100s, which I think are a really good set of speakers. I've got got a couple pairs of those, and uh, I think for just uh, kind of rock and roll music in a garage setting, they're the perfect speaker. Um, but if I had, you know, dead output transistors, and I know I, know I checked, I double-checked um, my connections, there were no uh, shorted, you know, speaker wires on either end. So that would lead me to believe I've got a problem with one of my L100s, which I really don't want. <laughs> That's an even harder thing to solve because the, uh, the L112 woofers and those are expensive or almost impossible to find. Um, you guys get it. So I think we're left with something down on this board at this point in time now that is causing a problem. So uh, we'll get into testing components here, and uh, I think this stuff would be much easier to find than the output transistors. I'm going to put the heat sink grease on these, put them back together. And the other channel's working fine, so I'm going to go ahead and redo the heat sink grease on those just just because that what I've been taking off of these has been super dried up and I want this amp to last for a long time. And on the other side here, the heat sink um, is the little connector that everything goes in. You'll have to kind of hold it from the back side while you tighten everything up on this side and make sure nothing's uh, 
uh, none of the connectors are actually touching anywhere on the uh, the heat sink itself. Okay, we've got uh, the output transistors tested here, and they're good. We've got um, the heat sink grease replaced on all four of these. And now we're starting to dig deeper. Uh, these units have a lot of uh, protection units built into them. Matter of fact, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fuses inside this unit. And the way that plays out, this is the main power fuse for the overall unit. It's a slow blow fuse. This fuse, this fuse here, one is for the, the positive rail, one is for the negative rail feeding these, the NPN set up here. One is the positive rail, one is the negative rail for this. And then on the output here, you've got, um, uh, these are two amp slow blows here uh, in the right and left speaker that are designed um, to keep your, uh, in case you do have a short in your speakers, to keep from burning up these output transistors. So I have gone through and tested all these fuses, and all of the fuses in this unit are good. You know, in case you're wondering how to check a fuse, it's as simple as uh, put a continuity tester on one end and a continuity test on the other end. If you get a beep, you've got a good uh, good fuse in that case. So um, right back in there, and then similarly down here, these are easy to test. Um, good there. Good there. Good there good there so and of course we know the main power one was good but we'll test it just in case there we go um, it's that quick and simple to test all the fuses in this unit if you're running this amp at 8 ohms this recommends 2 amp slow blows in the output if for whatever reason you were driving a constant 4 ohm load it'll tell you you can go up to 5 amp um, on the outputs here so um, just keep that in mind the manual will tell you all this all right, up next, I'm going to remove the little um, screws that hold these boards down into the... Uh, notice I keep all my screws in a little metal magnetic container here, but um, we're going to take these out so we can get this board off of... There we go. Now I can start to lift this board up and you can see we've got long wires that lead down to the sockets. And you can also check the sockets at this make point, make sure everything was good um, as you were installing your transistors here from a uh, wafer board standpoint. Giving it a good visual inspection, oops, these do have some little rubber standoffs. Make sure not to lose those um, as you're working on this unit. And there's one for every one of those little screws. Um, next I'm going to give it a good visual inspection on the back side here. And I'm looking really good and I'm not seeing any traces um, burn up at this point in time. But, you know, it's always worth uh, double and triple checking because uh, this unit has traces on both sides of the board. So just uh, look good for burn up traces. Okay, upon closer inspection, I did find a burnt resistor right here, okay? And it was really hard to tell. It's just a little black on the middle. And then I pulled this transistor right here, and sure enough, it's it's dead. Which led me down a, uh, <laughs> a rabbit hole, and I'll show you here on the screen. All right, so I knew this amplifier needed to be repaired. So what did I do? I went and hit the forums and started searching for uh, information on this unit. You know, I'm always looking for, hey, you know, that part died and there's usually a common reason for it. Or, hey, this unit has these uh, maybe tantalum capacitors in there that you might should consider swapping out for something else. Or, there are different tips and hints that might lead you to avoiding having this problem again in the future. And so while I was out here searching for just hints, tips, and uh, maybe uh, slight tweaks or mods, I started running across uh, these high-end audiophile upgrade kits, I will call them, that people make for this unit. And there are several different ones out on the market. 
And, you know, I got to looking at it and I was like, wow, it sounds like they've got some pretty good Sonic upgrades. Plus, I would be replacing all the components on these boards at the same time and ensuring, you know, long life of this unit. Because uh, one of my fears was just replacing the uh, the failed component. You know, I might have the other side fail a year later. Who knows? That type thing. So, um, and I was also considered a, concerned about the age of the uh, the large filter capacitors in this unit. They were getting quite old as well. So I ended up here with this high-end audio file upgrade kit. And I, I researched it and compared it to other kits out on the market. And uh, this one's actually from a, a, a company. If you're searching for it online, you'll follow it, find it under the Quaco, Quaco I guess it is, audio um, upgrade board. But man, do they give a lot of good info here. If you look, um, I mean, it's just, you can scroll on and on and on. And it talks about why they did this thing, shows some... Uh, some feedback they've gotten from customers. I read a lot of great reviews online, so I decided to bite the bullet. It wasn't cheap. It's $259 here, as you can see, for this kit. It comes with pretty much everything except for the two large filter capacitors. And the same gentleman uh, sells those as well, so I bought some of those. And I just thought we'd uh, kind of redo this unit uh, top to bottom here. Uh, you know, $259 plus those capacitors got roughly 300 bucks or so in this unit. Uh, plus the 100 I originally paid. Well, I paid 100 for it and the preamp. So maybe I've got, let's just call it $60 in this unit. So I don't think, you know, $360 for a really nice high-end uh, 220-watt amplifier that I'm going to use all the time is a bad deal. So um, we ordered this kit and I thought I'd uh, let you see me put it together today and we'll, we'll check it out and see how it sounds. Okay, well, let's take a look at what all I ordered for this unit. Um, first up, a uh, new Rectiflyer block here for the unit. This is a 35 amp, um, 8 ohms. When you add in much larger capacitors like this and you first power this unit on, the inrush current surge to fill these capacitors is extreme and it can put stress on some of the factory devices here so we're going to swap out what i think was originally probably a six amp bridge now with this 35 amp bridge um, we're going to put a nice size uh, thermistor in line here this is an sl32 um, size thermistor uh, the power switches on these are known for um, for struggling when you first power them on as well due to their rating and so I've got a higher power rated um, switch here that, that and all this was bought from that same individuals um, I did get the two as you can see here these are Nippon Chemicon uh, 18,000 microfarad at 75 volt capacitors and it'll end up replacing both of these because this is 10,000 and what are these others 12,000 so right now it's got 22,000 in there but We'll get these in there. And then there are the board kits here. So you've actually got the boards themselves that'll play, replace both of these boards. You've got all the parts. Uh, this is two different kits here. You've got all the ports to, uh, to stuff them with. And it comes with a really nice set of instructions here that walk you through everything. And so the only other thing I obtained while I was on the guy's site, I was looking at upgrading the um, preamp. And he sold a capacitor kit um, that were all audio grade capacitors. And I went and <laughs> I went and looked, and there were a couple values here I didn't have in stock in audio grade. And uh, the price of these, and I got free shipping, but since I bought it with everything else, um, I thought I would just get pick that up as well, make it simple. And it comes with new uh, connectors here for the uh, the inputs and outputs. So. We're going to dive in and, and get this going. I think what I may do at this point, though, is break this and call this part one and then make a second video here on the actual build part of it and call that uh, part two just to keep the video for being so long. So stay tuned and uh, see you on uh, part two.